This show, I primarily try to, to extract as much information and as many gems for people who want to be entrepreneurs, people who are just trying to climb the ranks, or maybe they're just confused and sure. they're too afraid to take a chance on themselves. You kind of touched on, you know, how you went from voiceovers and acting into the world of mobile. But was mobile tech, was this always something that was in you, something that you did on the side? Like, where did your love affair with tech come from? And, you know, you spoke about 2011 being such a difficult year. Can you speak to anybody who might think the world is crashing in on them? And, you know, that is the optimal time to just do something bold and say, look, nothing else is going right. Let me at least jump out there and go after something I've, I've always just wanted to do. Because that's what it sounds like happens to you. 100%. And you know what the thing is, man, like I think I, I mentioned, I touched on it a little bit, but the thing that was stopping me for a long time besides time, well, now I had the time, but the thing that kept stopping me even when I had the time was, who's going to want to listen to me? I don't have any new or engaging insights, right? I mean, I'm just another guy who happens to like this stuff. Who cares what I think? And you know, look, I, I don't claim to have crazy insights even today. I think people like me for a combination of what I say, but also how I, how I say it. The point is, it doesn't matter. I had something to contribute. I had something that people wanted to see. And whatever that is, whatever combination that is, it worked out. But I never, never, ever would have known it if I hadn't just said, you know what, what do I have to lose? Let me just apply and see. And I'll try and write a few pieces. And if everybody hates me, you know, after a year, everybody still hates me in the comments. I'll be like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just think of something else. You know, I don't know if I ever said that, but I think that was kind of my attitude, my unconscious thing. It's like, I have cared about this so much. And to answer your other questions, I blame Star Trek. I've been watching Star Trek since second grade. It's the reason that I am into all these handheld gadgets. Um, but I'm like, I've loved this all my life. I bet you I can write something great about it that people will like to see. And I just needed somebody to give me a chance. And it's, it's, um, I'm so glad it was Pocket Now that did. Because, you know, uh, I said this to a, my, one of my college classes at ODU where I, I, uh, I had a guest appearance there uh, earlier. And <laughs> I... Uh, I, th I feel like uh, in America, particularly, a lot of people are like, you went out there on your own and did your own thing, and that's, and that's awesome, and it is, and it's, it's great. But I would never have been able to learn the things that I learned as quickly as I did and get the access I did if I hadn't joined Pocket Now, which was a blog at the time of like seven or eight people, and they all taught me everything. You know, They all knew more than I did because I was such a noob. For me, for a person like me who's not as individualistic maybe, I need that. I need to feel like I'm part of a, a family when I start a new thing. I need that, that, that um, comfort, you know, blanket, whatever you want to call it. And so I, I, I would make the point that people shouldn't think there's just one road to success, one way to do something. And if you are the opposite of me, if you're that ruggedly individualistic person who's like, I don't need anyone else around, if that works for you, then do it. The point is just do it. Find a way to do it, but act, but stop talking yourself out of it because you believe you don't have anything valuable to offer because that's not true. That's not true at all. You know, you bring up so many great, great points. Uh, and, you know, off the top of my head, I want to touch on a couple, if, if I may, before we move the comments Please. on. You know, I was recently uh, listening to a podcast. Um, I forget who I was listening to, but he said that same point. So I just want to highlight it. You know, if you, whoever you may be, whatever industry you're in, stop doubting that there is an audience for you. Stop looking at everybody else who's winning and thinking maybe they possess something you don't possess. Maybe they are more talented. Maybe, you know, they are more established. There is an audience for everyone, someone who's going to hear your voice, respect your perspective in a way that they might not respect mine yep. or respect Michael's. So just go out there and do it. And then another point that you brought up, Mike, that I just find fascinating and I really drill home on this show week over week over week. And it's so interesting how you just brought it up. 
is you're basically like, look, sometimes you kind of got to get in where you fit in. In your case, you yeah. came over to pocket now, you know, and you're freelancing. But you're low on the totem pole, but you were able to get into this small blog and you learned everything you know. People, they were willing to allow you to learn as much as you wanted to absorb. And I tell people this all the time, get in where you fit in. If that means interning, if that means being an assistant, if that means sweeping floors and cleaning toilet bowl, whatever it is, the goal is to get in the door. Yep. And once you're in the building, you know, you'll find that there are so many people who are willing and capable and want to help you. And, you know, they'll share the knowledge with you. But you can't do that unless you humble yourself and get in the door. And we just live in this culture of everybody wants to be a boss. And yeah. you got to learn first. The boss thing will come later. But how can you be a boss if you don't even know the industry? Exactly right. No, 100%. And, and so much of that comes from just pounding the ground. Like, I feel like that that's a, something I, a really valuable that I took from the acting world, which is just like, if you do not go out and audition, you will never get a job. And you have to go out and get, you have to go get punched in the face, you know, 200 times a year, basically. You have to have people tell you no all the time. And it, 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 it tends to create in the people who can do it longer than I did, this like really hard exterior shell where you're just like, Walk in, audition, walk out, throw the script away, forget about it. If they call me, they call me. Otherwise, I'm on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a really important thing to keep in mind, too, because I had the luck of never being laid off. I wasn't trying to get a job in, say, 2008, or I didn't have a job in 2008 where I, where I got laid off because of an economic situation. Or now, during this current period, you know, making stuff for the internet is a good job to have because everyone's watching a lot more content. But for the people who have whose timing who aren't blessed with really great timing in that way, it's important to, tr to try to avoid the trap of succumbing to, well, I just got laid off for the third time in two years, so I'm going to give up. Well, maybe, maybe it is time for a new thing. But if, if it's not, if you still have a passion for it, just keep going back to it and eventually it's going to work out. Absolutely. I'm not a motivational speaker, but I do believe that, you know? No, yeah, I mean, you believe it because you're living proof of it. So it, it's, it's, very important for all of us to share these gems and to let people know that we're no more exceptional. We're just as human as they are. The only yeah. thing different that I have ever come, you know, granted, there are some extremely talented people out here, without a doubt. But you, if you work hard, you know, you can catch up in terms of talent. There's people who are just naturally born gifted, but the, the, sure. the, the great equalizer is work ethic, right? Yeah. But yeah. The, at the end of the day, the, the, the main thing that I've personally found, and I've interviewed a lot of highly successful people, the thing that separates them from 99.9% .9 of the other individuals out there, they just never gave up. It's as simple as that. No matter how many times they got punched in the face, no matter how many times they got told, told no, no matter how many times they, they faced adversity, disappointment, setbacks, they found a way to get back up and go at it another day. Yep. That's, it's as simple as that. 100%. And I will say before we get too far away from the, the, the voiceover job, because there, there is a useful anecdote there. That was, that was the, a full-time job when I left college, yes. And it, and, it, and it paid me very well. It didn't start that way. It started three years before that because I saw an ad on Craigslist for a startup that was doing books on tape for law students. And I auditioned in a Starbucks and they paid me like $12 per case file. You know, I was advised by my acting professor who I really, really respect. And it was good advice. Do this a couple times and then say no, cause they're not paying you enough. Okay. I just kept doing it and the money kept increasing and the work kept increasing. And then it, it turned into this really big thing, but it never would have happened if I had been too high and mighty to say like, no, I'm not going to drive up to a Starbucks and, audition for you at a table you know you just if you're if you're trying to get a foot in the door there's no there's almost no wrong way to do it there's you maintain respect for yourself don't do anything like terrible. but you know what i mean you know what i mean there's almost no there's almost um nothing you shouldn't shouldn't do up to a certain point 
No, I'm so happy you told that story. I, I, I think it's necessary. And I think a lot of people will benefit just from that statement of you seeing a professor, someone who obviously you looked up to. Yes. Um, even your professor telling you, hey, you know, do it a couple of times and then it's time to move on. You know, the fact that you didn't take that advice and understood that, you know, I'm doing this for passion. I'm doing it for purpose. I actually enjoy doing it. And you got better over time. And that's when the money tends to follow. Yep. So What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.